Let's reverse engineer this animation as requested by Shinyu Sunny. And I gotta say, I'm very confident. This is gonna be super easy, no problem. Let's get to work. So in Illustrator, I brought in our reference and then created this checkered box in a 1080 by 1920 artboard and then duplicated that to create this colorful version that is reminiscent of our original. Then I sent the whole thing into After Effects with the magic of Overlord. Now we simply need to make this animate on a loop. So firstly, let's duplicate this layer, then add two position keyframes, two seconds apart. Now on the second keyframe, let's drag this whole layer down to line up with the bottom of our original, like this, and then parent the first layer to the second. Now we just need to add an expression to the position property, loop out, open and close bracket, and now this will loop infinitely. Next, let's pre-compose these layers and then pop in the middle hexagon. In Illustrator, I also made these lines as a reference for the tunnel, so let's send that up to After Effects as well. And now we get to the easiest part of this whole tutorial. We just need to add a corner pin and drag the corners to where they need to be done. Wait a minute, that doesn't look right at all. Hmm. So looking at the reference, there seems to be very little distortion of the squares as they move from the center outward, unlike my monstrosity. But don't worry, I've got another idea. Let's use the warp effect. And of course, that's distorting on the other end. Maybe they made the tunnel in 3D space? That's not fucking right either. I just showed you hours of work in a few seconds, so you probably can't grasp the time and effort I put into trying solution after solution, but it was starting to get really frustrating and I was running out of ideas. At this point, I was getting ready to give up. But I'm not a quitter and I'd already promised the sponsor of this video that I would get it done, so let's let past me go back to the drawing board while I tell you a bit more about Skillshare. Skillshare is a place for creators to gather and learn together. It's an on-demand platform that allows you to pick a topic and learn at your own pace. You are absolutely spoiled for choice at Skillshare with thousands of classes in a wide range of categories, including animation, 3D, design, AI, art, illustration, creativity, as well as marketing and business. The classes in Skillshare are taught by experts in the industry, so you're getting insights and lessons from professionals with tons of experience. And speaking about color, if you want to deepen your knowledge of color, there are many classes that can help. This class, Color Theory for Illustrators by Brooke, will help you understand important color concepts to lay a strong foundation. Then, you can follow that up with this class by Dominic Flask to learn how to express emotion with color. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today. So after a bunch more testing, I just kept coming back to corner pin. Like, why doesn't this just work? This is not a complicated animation. This was supposed to be the easiest reverse engineering video I've ever made. And then I remembered about another pinning effect, CC power pin. Can't hurt to try that as well, just to check it off the list. So I popped it on and lined it up, and of course, the same trash distortion. But wait, what's this? Perspective? What if I decreased this? Oh my God, look at that. That is beautiful. Setting this to 50% is the fix I'd been searching for. So now that my nightmare is over, let's crack on. Now we can fill the rest of the sides in by duplicating the checkerboard and rotating it by 60 degrees. Then with each duplicate, we can just add 60 degrees using math right in the rotation property box. And then we simply need to repeat that process until we fill in all the empty spaces. Now we need to offset these animations. So I'm just gonna use motion tools to offset the compositions by 12 frames and then drag them back in the timeline. Now we just need to add a null to the center of the scene like this and then parent our checkerboard layers as well as the hexagon layer to the null. Next, we need to add a rotation animation. So let's add in two keyframes, one and a half seconds apart, and then let's change the first keyframe to something like negative 55. Now with the second keyframe selected, let's hit F9 and go into the graph editor and add a really strong ease in like this. You may not have noticed this in the original, but if we pause just at the cut of this animation, you can see that the edges are being masked on, so let's add that in as well. To do that, let's solo our bottom checkerboard and uncheck this symbol in the effects panel to hide the effect. There are many ways we could achieve the result we're after, but in this case, I'll just create a mask and animate it. So with the pen tool, I'm just going to start adding in a mask using the squares as a reference until I mask out the bottom half of the shape like this. Then let's hit M on our keyboard to open up the mask property and change it to subtract. 
Now dropping in two keyframes, we can simply drag this whole mask down on the second keyframe and change some of these path points to vary the speed. Then we just need to drag the keyframes back and adjust the timing if necessary. The next step of course would be to repeat this process with the other comps while being sure to create some variation between each mask. And this is the final result. And as usual, you can grab the free project files in the description. If you liked this, check out the other pro animations I've reverse engineered in this playlist and remember to subscribe for more Motion XP.